In my hand here is a piece of elemental potassium, which is a metal with extraordinarily fascinating properties. It is as soft as butter, so you can easily cut it with a knife. It melts already at 64 degrees Celsius. You can make an alloy with it that is a liquid at room temperature. And most importantly, it explodes violently in contact with water. But it is also quite expensive and difficult to get. I already demonstrated making potassium metal from its hydroxide in a previous video. But this process is not scalable at all for a spectacular reason that I will reveal at the end of this video. That is why today I want to try and make a larger amount of it myself from potassium carbonate, also known as potash. To do this, we will start by mixing 100 grams of potassium carbonate with 100 grams of magnesium turnings as a reducing agent. And now this needs to be transferred into still that I've baked out in the oven so it's still warm. In order that our cooler right here won't get contaminated with some of the reaction products or side products, I will stuff this right here with a paper towel. I've got this big gas burner right here and I will use this to set the reaction mixture on fire. Now it's reacting, as you can see by the nice fireworks that's being cursed by some of the magnesium getting thrown out of there. Actually a bit more violent than it was last time. During this process, the potassium carbonate reacts with the magnesium metal, forming magnesium oxide, carbon and our potassium metal, which we can then distill. And by the smoke you can see that we're definitely using some, losing some potassium metal to evaporation. You can see the nice green potassium vapor right here, if you look closely. That's potassium metal evaporating, it has a green vapor. A little petition from me, please tell Elias in the comments that he needs to clean his lab stand. I'm getting tetanus just by looking at it. and. He has everything there to clean it, he just refuses to do it. It just shows that I'm working. <laughs> Feels good. It's going to be super tight. Pass immer auf den Flansch auf bei sowas, ne? Ah, ich dreh den Rücken sonst. This should be isolated enough now with steel wo uh, stone wool. We're going to start by greasing our KF flange. That's not really a KF flange. Going to use a rather liberal amount of grease. <laughs> Do you want a little bit of O-ring with your grease? <laughs> Unlike someone else, I prefer not cracking the... Yeah, I'm sure the grease helps you from cracking the glass. <laughs> and now the most interesting part. By the way, somebody was worried that the potassium metal at 400 degrees Celsius will degrade, but I had this paper towel in here which will keep everything tight. Oh, and I shouldn't talk about something else like doing this, otherwise I make a fool out of myself. Yeah, only an idiot would crack the glass while screwing it down. <laughs> Let me show you a scene from last video. Why are you greasing the KF flange? <laughs> because it's not really a KF flange. Well, well, well. God, we had some grease uh, on there. This sharp, sharp knacks. I find it not really easy to touch. I think. Uh, Trust me, I'm an expert. Oh, I've made a mistake. It's too low. Yes. I feel like Elias gets 
join Greece for free. The setup is now complete. Additionally, I've added right here the strap and it's filled with a little bit of mineral oil to hopefully catch any carbon that will become airborne so it won't get into the pump and mess up the entire oil, which would be very annoying and happened to me like three times already now. <laughs> so let's turn on the pump and hope nothing goes too terribly wrong. As you can see, this foams up a lot right here. But this will calm down in just a second. Now it has calmed down and now I can start to carefully and slowly evaporate this apparatus. Let's hope it's not too hot and will cause any horrible trouble. It should be fine. Yeah. I have a little bit of black stuff in here, but it should be fine. We need to set this to maximum temperature, 900 degrees Celsius. Now we are at the temperature where potassium metal should definitely be just beat this tilling over, but nothing has come over yet, so we are going to try and heat the uh, uh, cooler right here. Hopefully we should observe something coming over. Oh! Exactly when we restarted the camera, the first drops came over. It's so typical, but it doesn't matter. This house. Das sieht ja mal aber richtig geil aus in hier. We're building the Tower of Potassium. Alter, das funktioniert ja auch prima mit dir. Ja, let's try the Tower of Potassium. Sag du das. The destination is done now. There is no more potassium metal coming over and we've reached the maximum temperature of the furnace. Was ist mit die Steinwolle hier? Lebensgefährlich. Silikose bekommt man dadurch. It has cooled down. So, now we can turn off the pump. And observe that no oil is getting sucked back. This needs to be mentioned every time specifically. And now we should be able to open this up somewhere. Now we can let some air in and then the potassium should oxidize. Yeah, you can see it immediately tarnishing. We will add some kerosene to the potassium metal to protect it. Seriously. This is the most dangerous part because when heating this potassium can easily ignite the kerosene and something can spray out of here. So that's why I'm wearing some extra protective equipment right now. And let's hope it goes well. That's a feeling for high school. Let's attempt to burn this out. That doesn't look too bad. The yield is the best I've ever gotten with 34 grams, which corresponds to roughly 60% of theory. Before you leave, let me quickly demonstrate why we can't scale up the same reaction with potassium hydroxide by attempting the same process with 100 grams of potassium hydroxide and 100 grams of magnesium metal. And now we first have to get rid of the cat. And in order to slow down the reaction, I will add 100 grams of mineral oil. Ja, 
Okay, the spark line was not enough, so I will help it with my blowtorch. As you can see by the tiny smoke cloud over there, most of the potassium metal probably has burned. So yeah, this is definitely not the way to go if you want to make a lot of potassium metal. Thanks a lot to Advanced Tinkering for filming this video and providing all the necessary equipment. And thanks to you for watching.